Matt Worker draws cartoons for a living. He's a staff cartoonist for Politico, an American political journalism outlet just outside Washington. We're a strange mix of things in that we are making serious commentary on serious topics, but we're doing it not so seriously, and we get to draw our opinions with silly pictures. The Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist says the main advantage of a political cartoon is being able to communicate an opinion very quickly. I can draw a picture and put in a little word bubble, and you can read it in about four seconds, and you get it. It has to hit you in the face kind of hard and fast, and um, you know it when you've been hit. In this cartoon, for example, Worker was inspired by an iconic image by American artist Norman Rockwell, reflecting a traditional scene of American culture. The cartoonist says over the years, his craft has evolved. When I started 40 years ago doing cartoons, an editorial cartoon was a black and white single panel cartoon in a newspaper. And now, uh, cartoons can be color, they can be animated, they can be um, graphic novels that are political. Like this 2018 Pulitzer Prize winning work by journalist Jake Halper and illustrator Michael Sloan, currently on display at the museum in Washington. The series tells the story of two Syrian families' harrowing journey from their homeland to the U.S., where they settled as refugees in 2016. Patty Rule is vice president of exhibits at the museum. Since the beginning of this country, editorial cartoons have been framing issues and framing debate um, from, you know, Ben Franklin, the live free or die, the segmented snake that rallied the 13 colonies together. So um, it's always been a part of this country and the world's way of freely expressing ideas and debate. But free expression sometimes comes at a heavy price. In 2015, Islamic terrorists attacked the offices of Charlie Hebdo a French satirical magazine after it published unflattering cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Twelve people were killed in the attack, including several prominent cartoonists. And within their culture, they're certainly entitled to be offended, but they're not entitled to decide that they're going to go to Paris and kill the people that created that cartoon. Many cartoonists have had to flee their countries because they were brave enough to take on um, regimes or political figures. Worker hopes that in these troubled times, people will appreciate cartoons for what they are. I think the good kind of political cartooning is something that slips in a really good political point with a certain amount of good humor and wit that people will process and hopefully it won't make them angry but will make them think. Julie Tabo, VOA News, Arlington, Virginia.